Let A be an m by m matrix with integer entries. And let B be an m tuple with integer entries. Then the system Ax equal to B has an integral solution if and only if for all y, which is an m tuple with rational entries, such that y transpose A is integral, then y transpose B is an integer. Because we are looking for solutions to this system that have integer entries, this system is called a system of linear Diophantin equations. Here's an example of a system that has no integer solutions. Suppose that A is the matrix 1, 3, 1, minus 1, and B is the tuple 0, 1. Now, if Y is 1 half, 1 half, then Y transpose A is simply 1, 1. The entries here are all integers, but if you look at Y transpose B, that's equal to 1 half, and that's not an integer. So by this theorem, there's no integral solution. And we can see this more clearly by writing out the system in full. So the system that we're looking at is this. x1 plus 3x2 equals 0. And x1 minus x2 is equal to 1. And if we add the two equations, we get 2x1 plus 2x2 equals 1. So if x1 and x2 are integers, then the left-hand side must be even, but the right-hand side is odd, and so there's no solution. Now, this y actually tells us how we can take a linear combination of these equations. So what we can do is, we can multiply the first equation by a half, and then multiply the second equation by a half, and then add them together, we'll end up with x1 plus x2 equals 1 half. And clearly, this has no integral solutions. An easy consequence of this is the following corollary for the case when there's only one equation. The a1 up to am be integers such that they are relatively prime. In other words, the greatest common divisor of these numbers is 1. And let beta be a rational number. Then the equation a1x1 plus all the way up to anxn equals beta has an integral solution if and only if beta is an integer. So for example, if the equation is 11x1 minus 7x2 equals 5, then by this corollary, this will have an integral solution because the greatest common divisor of 11 and 7 is 1. And here, the right-hand side value is an integer. We are not going to show the details of a proof of this theorem, but what we'll do is, we'll see how one can actually solve a system of linear Diophantine equations. And once one understands the process involved, a proof can be extracted. So what we need here are elementary column operations. Say we want to solve the system A is equal to B, where the entries of A and the entries of B are all integers. What we are allowed to do is interchange two columns of A, multiply a column of A by minus 1, and add a column of A to another column of A. The important fact is, if you perform any of these operations to ax equal to b to obtain a system a prime x equal to b, in other words, if a prime is obtained from a by a finite sequence of these operations, then ax equal to b has an integral solution, if only if a prime x equals b has an integral solution. So what we want to do is, we want to use these operations to arrive at an a prime that will allow us to draw some conclusions on what the solution has to be like. So, if we can solve this system, a prime x equal to b, we'll have a solution for a x equal to b. And to see this, notice that if a prime is obtained from a by interchanging two columns, then whatever solution to a prime x equal to b we have, we just have to interchange the two components corresponding to the interchange columns to give us a solution to a x equal to b. If a prime is obtained from a by multiplying, say, column i by minus 1, we just have to flip the sign of component i in a solution to a prime x equal to b to obtain a solution for a x equal to b. What about this operation? Suppose that a prime is obtained from a by adding column i to column j. Then, if a prime x prime equals b for some integral x prime, then we can construct x as follows and it will give us a solution to a x equal to b. Let us now look at an example that illustrates this process. 
Suppose that the system that we're looking at is the following. So here the matrix A will be 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, minus 3, and B will be the tuple 3, 1. So we're going to add column 2 to column 1. That will give us 1, 3 in the first column. Next, we're going to add column 1 to column 2. And let's call this A prime. Then what this is saying is A prime x equals B is a system x1 equals 3 and 3x1 plus 5x2 minus 3x3 equals 1. Remember that the original system has an integral solution if and only if this does. But now for this system, we have to set x1 to 3. And so this will give us the equation 5x2 minus 3x3 equals minus 8 to solve. And one can easily find a solution to this. We can set x2 to minus 1 and x3 to 1. Now we need to go backwards to get a solution for this. So to get a solution for this, because we perform this operation, according to this, we have to form the solution as given here. So x1 here will be adding x1 here and x2 here from the previous step. And that will give us 2. And x2 is minus 1. And x3 is 1 still. And now to obtain a solution for this, we note that this operation was performed. So we need to add x1 to x2. That will become our x2. And so x1 equals 2, x2 equals 1, and x3 equals 1 is going to be a solution to this system here. And one can easily check that that's the case. As you can see in this example, what we have done is we try to turn the top row into this form when there's only one non-zero entry. And once we have done that, if the first equation gives us a solution, then we just need to focus on the rest of the system. And so you can imagine that we can eliminate one variable at a time until we get down to a system that is simple enough for us to solve. And that's the idea behind the whole process.